Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our betting breakdown for the MMA card uh, tomorrow evening. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, this is a very contrarian approach to MMA betting. The idea is that the VIG is just kind of just difficult to overcome, just, just knowing, trying to know fighters better than the rest of the public. Uh, rest of the public, rest of the betting public, which is usually, I mean, that's a lot of money being placed in MMA. And for, for someone to come out and think that, you know, they, they are better than the entire sum of, of, of the sharp money and all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's quite the egotistical jump, you know, but that doesn't mean that, that you can't, um, you can't wager on some of this stuff because there's edges to be found, in my opinion, in analyzing what, part of a line has been juiced up by bias what's part of a line has been juiced up by psychology what part of a line has been juiced up by what people hope to happen or are rooting for to happen versus what actually will happen or should happen um and this type of approach to mma betting that i developed is and develop it specifically for mma betting it's the exact way i deal with all kinds of sports betting and quite honestly, it's the way I've been dealing with analyzing stocks and stock market investing for the last, you know, as long as most of you have been alive, um, which has been responsible for the majority of my of my my successes. Um, you know, the idea that not to give a full stock market lesson that that you can look at a stock and, and say, oh, my God, the, the, the stock is priced to 58. It should be higher. I mean, the, the, the leap that you have to take intellectually to 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 come up with that assertion is really, really difficult in my opinion. Um, the only way that that you can, in my opinion, have an edge in the stock market or any market which is really liquid that a lot of very smart people are betting into is to be able to just gauge the psychology of, of the wagers, you know, be able to gauge the psychology of what's going into that stock going up or what's going into the stock staying down. And is the stock a particularly loved company as opposed to a hated one? And likewise, when you're dealing with with sports betting, you know, you see a line up there, you see like Kansas City minus, you know, Philadelphia minus three or something like that. For you to say, oh, Philadelphia should be favored by more than that. I mean, think about what you're saying, you know, but what you can say is something like, like Philadelphia is minus three, but, 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 you know, the public just loves Patrick Mahomes. So, so much of what's going into that Philadelphia minus three is probably people just loving Patrick Mahomes a little bit too much. So maybe there's some inherent value in Philadelphia. Like for example, like Philadelphia's not minus three in the Super Bowl; it's minus something else. But that, that's the way that I look at sports betting and 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 things of that nature. And also, I look at 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 at, at people bouncing, meaning you cut, you don't you want to fade people coming off of big performances, and you know excuse fighters or anybody in, in sports that that had a bad performance having come off of a really really good one. And these types of things is what they're responsible. What what have been responsible. These types of and forms of analysis have been responsible for quite a bit of success for me. So I'm jumping into the MMA uh, uh, streets with this type of approach. Now, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's not going to make any sense and a lot of stuff that you're not going to want to bet. And you're going to get some underdogs. You're going to get some big time props. And you can go on bad streaks playing this way. But all I can tell you is this is this is my best approach to taking a real cool, kind of fun EV uh, approach to MMA betting. Um, last week we had a couple of good four to ones, um, which made up for a bunch of, of, of losers. And let's just see if we can't, uh, attack this slate from a similar perspective and you'll see what I'm, so you'll see what I mean. Um, okay. First, uh, fight we have, uh, and by the way, Oh, a couple of disclaimers. So here's the deal. I bet on every fight that I'm recommending and I'm going to recommend something every fight. So you have 13 fights and I'm going to bet the same amount for myself each fight. And that's going to be one hundred and eighty dollars. That is one, you know, hashtag unit. Okay, I'm not going to say any bets better than the other. Uh, that's just the way I'm doing it. And everything I am going to be betting for myself. All right. Um, so we first have Tukagal versus Elvis Brenner. So here's the one thing that that we've heard all week long throughout the industry, and that while Tukagal probably has him covered either way, he's definitely a decisionator. He's definitely not going to be that aggressive, you know, uh, uh, you know, if anything, maybe he gets, you know, he has a nice confident decision or anything like that. So what we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to take Tukagov to finish. Um, so it's either going to be in round one or round two. Um, you know, you've been following me by now. 
that I love these round two um, props, okay? Because you usually get the big jump from round one to round two. But here, you're really not getting too much. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go, we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to go two could go off round one, which I like, or we're going to go two could go off round three because you get a big bump from round two to round three. But we're just gonna we're just gonna take the more conservative approach, and we're just gonna take Tukagov in round one for one hundred eighty dollars. Now it's not gonna let me bet this right now um, because uh, it doesn't let me do this uh, oh, with Zoom um, when Zoom is running. That's what I'm recording in Zoom, but I promise you I will bet all these things when we're done. Um, but I'm trying to think of whether I really want to go Tukagov round one or round three. That round three at ten to one is really tempting. You know, just, just beat them up a little bit and finally in round three, kind of get it done. You know, maybe maybe after round two, he's kind of getting an easy decision and his, and, his, his, and, and the fans are starting to boo him. And then he says, you know, screw this, I'm going to get it. So, you know, we are going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to change this. We're going to go, I like this narrative. We're going to go Tukagov round three at 10 to one. All right, uh, next one, we have Shane Young versus Blake Builder. So you have uh, Shane Young is coming off a two-year layoff. Blake Builder is definitely the more exciting fighter, but what you're getting is that is that Shane Young is definitely a superior striker. Um, and But coming off a two-year layoff, uh, we're not sure what to do with this. So I don't really see any big kind of lean either way. I think that what we're going to just do is play this fight to go to finish inside the distance, because that's something I'm not really hearing too much of. I'm getting builder getting some takedowns or, or Shane young to just kind of like, you know, outstrike him a little bit, but we're going to go either inside the distance or under 2.5. So under 2.5 would be minus 110, which uh, that certainly makes some sense. I don't think anybody's playing that, um, but let's see just inside the distance. We may as well. Um, is it worth spending another thirty cents for half a round? I actually, I actually don't think it is. So we're we're going to go right back. So we're just going to be under. So under two point five, minus one twenty, and we're going to bet one eighty on that one as well. And we're going to put you know two x times one eighty at the end. Okay, uh, Luma Lukbumi versus Elise Reed. All right, so this one is is pretty easy for me. Um, Luke Bumi apparently has Elise Reed cover every which way. Elise Reed is just terrible. Um, Luma Lukbumi is is my Muay Thai versus Elise Reed just just straight Taekwondo, and and you know wherever this fight goes, Elise Reed has a big problem. So. Uh, I'm not interested. I'm going to take Elise Reed plus the 255. So Elise Reed plus 255, that's good enough for me. The only other way I would do this is maybe look boomy inside the distance, some form. Um, that would be something like look boomy by submission plus 1400. Ouch. Boy, oh boy. Hang on a minute. Hang on a second. Let's look at some of these others. Or we can go to our our, our, our favorite. We can go to look boomy. Oh my God, plus 900 in round two. Or 300 in round three. Or 1600 in round three. Isn't that better than the Elise Reed play? No, we're, we're, we're going to. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, I can't help it. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go look boomy round two, plus nine hundred. Boy, I so funny. I really was gonna take Elise Reed, but I see this price plus nine hundred. I, I just can't avoid it. So look boomy round two plus nine hundred. Let's go. Uh, Jack Jenkins versus Don Shanus. Um, uh, Jack Jenkins supposedly is is going to wrestle the whole time. Uh, I don't really see too many, too many people picking the Shana side. It's almost as if it should be like a minus 500, but he's only minus 345. 
I don't know. I, I just can't do the Shayna side. I think what we have to do is again, is just, just, is just play this one inside the distance in some form. So again, we're going to go right back to the Jenkins probably in round two, if we can get it. Boy, but plus 400, that doesn't seem very juicy, but we're just going to go do this. And this is what we like to do with these favorites when there's no real lean on either side. We'll just take the round two because that's really just a prop that it just doesn't very few people ever play. So we're going to go Jenkins round two. Hopefully he gets it done. And these are all fun sweats, by the way. Okay. Uh, Malarkey versus Francisco Prado. All right. This is where the, 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 um, everybody's very, very confident in this one, that this is going to finish inside the distance. Um, Prado's going to go for that first round knockout. And if he doesn't get it, Malarkey's totally going to take over. So what we're going to do is we are going to bet this fight inside uh, to, to go the distance. Um, so we're either going to go the over two plus over 2.5, which is plus 135, or go the distance plus 150. So this one, I actually do want to, um, to buy that extra half a round. In other words, um, I want to actually – go the over 2.5 because I don't I I'm I would be afraid in those those last half of a round that Malarkey finishes him. So we're just going to take over 2.5 uh plus the 135. Um Clayton Rodriguez versus Shannon Ross. Um this is a perfect example of one where you know I, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> this is like a ridiculous bet but if you watch my DFS video, Clay Rodriguez is probably my favorite overall play in DFS. Um, but in, in this particular format, I really haven't, this is what I've seen. I've seen Rodriguez, although he had a tough, tough, uh, tough outing in his last one, he's got Shannon Ross covered everywhere. Shannon Ross is just kind of like a low level Australian regional scene. And the only thing Shannon Ross has, has possibly going for him is he just swings really hard. And maybe gets that first round, you know, somehow puncher's chance. So what we're going to do is we're going to bet on this one to go to the distance as well. And I just want to, I want to, I don't know whether I'm going to go Rodriguez by decision, or if I really want to get nasty, I'll go Ross by decision. Let's take a look and see what these are. Now nah, Ross by decision is only plus five hundred. I can't do that, but we could go Rodriguez by decision at plus one eighty. But the problem with that one is it's way too recency bias based. Because he just did go to a decision in his last fight. So I can't really do that. Um, so it's going to have to be Shannon Ross by decision at plus 500, which is a really ridiculous play. I can't imagine this ever coming in, which is why it just might work. Shannon Ross by decision plus 500. Um, I really advise you don't bet this, but I can't help myself. It's just so contrarian that I just have to do it. Josh Kulabau versus Melsik Baja Sarian. Um, so this is the fight that people are expecting to be just striker, striker, striker. Um, you know, if anything, I, maybe Baja Sarian might have a strong lean, might, might have a slight lean, but it's probably going to be kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to play someone by KO here, and it's going to be the Kulabau side. Let's take a look and see how this works. Kulabau by knockout is plus 400. That's going to be good enough for me. It's really the prop that's taking no action. And uh, that's where we're going to go with this. So Kulabau by KO. I mean, you're going to see some people taking the 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 Magisarian and, and some people take Magisarian maybe by, by submission or KO or something. Don't think, boy, oh boy, I don't think that many people are taking Kulabau by KO. So there's got to be some kind of inherent value. So we're going to try this. Okay. Uh, Tyson Pedro versus Modestus Bustakas. So we have Tyson Pedro, who um, uh, he's a big favorite, but I have to say that there is a little bit of skepticism. In other words, on both of these guys, Bukakis got his leg ripped up like several fights ago. Then he took it some time off and, and he came back with, Couple of okay wins. Pedro's got two quick wins over just terrible competition. So I think that people are afraid to lay the the, the wood on Tyson Pedro. So you know what we're going to do there? We're going to go the Tyson Pedro round two again. 
Um, you know, Tyson Pedro does have a little bit of takedown and, and submission upside. So I, I was thinking of doing Tyson Pedro by submission at plus 400, but we're just going to go the round two again. So Pedro round two plus 450. Let's go. The other thing that's good about this take is that I've heard that Pedro has no car cardio past the first round. So what I'm guessing is that he beats him up enough in the first round with the leg kicks and the second round he either gets him or maybe even takes him down and submits him. So Tyson Pedro round two. Um, Jim Crute versus Alonzo Menafield. So this is what we know for sure that that Menafield is going to be swinging for the fences that if he wins, it's going to be a KO. So any prop with Menafield by KO is bad. Also, any prop with Menafield inside the distance is bad. Um, Kroot, uh, he is a submission specialist. Um, and, you know, they're saying that if he gets gets a hold of him, he's going to totally submit Menafield. So any Kroot by submission prop is poor. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to play one of these guys by decision. And that person is going to be probably Kroot. Um, so what is Kroot by decision here? Kroot by decision plus 550. Let's go. That's an excellent, excellent play. Um, just a couple of more fights here, I think. No, actually, just a couple more. So Tafa versus Parker Porter. This is kind of a really low-level heavyweight uh, matchup. You have Tafa, who has the striking advantage, and Porter has some degree of takedown upside, but not too much KO upside, I guess. Um, so again, likewise, a, a, a Tafa by KO, we're not going to do. Parker Porter by submission, we're not going to do. I think what we're probably safe to do here is just – bet this thing to freaking to go into excuse me to make it to decision somehow so let's do that we're gonna go fight lines tafa porter uh so we can either go over 2.5 uh plus 125 or or um fight goes the distance plus 150 so either plus 150 there or hang on plus 125 so over 125 do i want do i really care about those last that last half around in this type of fight i probably not probably not so I, i'm i'm gonna take this to finish i mean to go the full the full uh 15 minutes so yes 150 uh excuse me 180 plus the 150 okay uh i think we are at last three fights so jack della magdalena versus randy brown um so this is everything that you want from us you know you have a, you have a uh, the australian fighter who has a bunch of ko's showcase fight for him in front of his home crowd um you know he's knocked out everybody every every just every single prop with him getting the ko is no good and I also like to say that the Randy Brown by decision is probably no good also because that's where his, you know, it's just so, so obvious that if he wins, he's just going to keep him in range somehow. So if we're going to play this, we're going to play one of three things. It's either going to be Magdalena, hashtag round two, right? Magdalena by decision or Brown by KO. I don't think I have it in me to go Brown by KO. Let's take a look at these uh, Magdalena by round two or Magdalena by decision. Let's take a look. Magdalena by decision is plus 330. Let's see Magdalena round two is plus 400. So you're not getting that big of a jump from plus 200 to plus 400 to make that work. So I'm just going to actually go Magdalena by decision. Magdalena by decision, which I don't think that many people are playing. So let's play that at plus 330. So we have all kinds of dog shots uh, on this uh, on this card. So now we're at the, the at the two uh, main uh, events. You have uh, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. Um, uh, 
you're hearing a little bit on both sides here. Um, Rodriguez, he's got all the volume. Emmett, if he gets it inside, you know, he's going to probably get some maybe, I guess Emmett is considered to have more take that, excuse me, more tail upside. So uh, I don't know what to do with this one. Uh, you, you're seeing a, enough on both sides. I think that what you're getting the least amount of is some Rodriguez by finish uh, prop. So let's, let's do that. Let's do Rodriguez by KO. Rodriguez by KO. Probably plus 250. Ugh. I, I don't want that. Rodriguez by submission plus 1200. That, that would be interesting. Oh, this is a terrible, terrible thing. You want to just go for the boring one? And just, not even boring. But there's like nothing to play here. I really wouldn't bet this. Is this going to be my first pass? Nah, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take a, we're just going to, we're just going to do the more, most boring, the most boring result. And we'll just play this to go to decision, I guess. So fight lines, um, uh, fight props, is that what it is? Fights go the distance, minus 135. Why not? It's a stupid bet, but we're going to make it just, just for something to do. And then you get to the uh, main event, which is uh, uh, Volkanovsky versus Makachev. So um, you're getting you're getting some you're getting a decent amount of people taking the dog shot on 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 Volkanovsky. It's not as if this is such a such a such a sneaky play. Um, and you're getting a lot of people taking Makachev uh, as you know Malkachev to finish or something like that. So the only thing I'm really going to try here is maybe a straight Volkanovsky, maybe by KO. That would be like an incredible sweat, you know, either that or something like maybe Makachev, like specifically round four. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say either Makachev round four. Okay. Or. Volkanovsky by KO, whichever is 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 more. So let's take a look and let's see what this is. So uh, Mark, Volkanovsky by KO plus 850. And let's look at Makachev round four plus 1400. That's going to be the one. Makachev round four plus 1400. So to review, and we're going to do all these for 180 once we get off of this, right? So to review, Makachev round four, Rodriguez Emmett to go the distance, Madalena by decision, uh, Tafa go to decision, Krut win by decision, Pedro round two, Kulabau by KO. Oh my God, that is no shot. Shannon Ross by decision. Are you kidding me? Who's, who's, that's ridiculous. Um, Malarkey over 2.5 plus 135. Jenkins round two, Lukbumi round two, Shane Young over 2.5. Um, all of these for 180. Is it going to let us bet these? Let's see. It's got to recheck location. It's not going to let me. But I'll do it as soon as we get off of here. Uh, that will do it. Good luck. And um, let's have some fun.